Hi there, you ever get the feeling that you don't quite know what essential oil to use for what situation? It seems like there's so many out there and it's a bit overwhelming and you want to live a natural wellness lifestyle and you want to be uh, clean and you know improve your health with natural products but you just don't know what essential oils to use. The solution is just learn one oil at a time and in this video we're going to talk about lemon essential oil. Hi, this is Ben Balden from BenBalden.com. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk all about lemon essential oil. I'll give you all the basic kind of a, you know, in-depth coverage of what lemon essential oil is, what it does, and how to use it. Now, I know the feeling of, you know, being overwhelmed and not knowing what oil to use for what situation. I've been there. When we started, first started using essential oils, you know, I had to figure out just a little bit at a time. And that's what we're going to do with this series of videos. So, but now I feel very confident. You know, I know when a situation arises, I feel like I know what to do. And I think you'll get there too. And we're just gonna take it one step at a time. My intention with this video is to provide you with all those little things that you need to know so that you can live a natural wellness lifestyle. So today we're talking about lemon essential oil, what it is and what to do with it. So I'm gonna go through a little bit of a background I give, lay the foundation for lemon essential oil because this is a more in-depth coverage. For a simpler coverage, you can go to benbalden.com slash lemon and there's a video that's just a few minutes that'll take, take you quickly through, uh, you know, top 10 uses of lemon essential oil. But we're going to go into some depth here, okay? Now, lemon essential oil is amazing because you can use it in all of the typical three ways that we use essential oils. Aromatically, meaning breathing it in. Eternally, meaning you drink it or eat it, and topically, meaning you're putting it on your skin and absorbing it through your skin. Just want to say a note about topical use of, of lemon essential oil. You can actually apply this on your skin straight which, or, or neat, which means you don't need to dilute it. It's not going to burn your skin or it's not spicy or anything. But you also have to be aware of um, the photosensitivity um, characteristic of lemon essential oil. So you're going to want to avoid sunlight and this essential oil. So when you apply it to your skin, you want to stay out of the sun for about 12 hours um, or just cover that part of the body that you applied it to. And remember, no tanning booths or anything like that and, and citrus oils. It's not just lemon oil, but a lot of citrus oils, not all of them, but a lot of them have this uh, photosensitivity that just makes your skin more sensitive to the sunlight, okay? And also when storing your essential oils, make sure you, for in generally, keep it away from bright light or, or sunlight, because um, that tends to degrade your essential oil. So to make it last long, um, just keep it in cool, dark places. That's why the bottle is actually brown. Okay, so you, um, you can use the essential oils aromatically, internally, and topically, and you're probably asking, well, how much do I use? Well, typically you're only going to use a drop or two. Now it depends on the mode of application, whether it's aromatic and you're just putting it in your diffuser and enough to diffuse into the air and you can usually breathe in as much as the air can hold. Um, you can use it internally, we're talking about two or three drops for an adult, um, orally meaning you're just applying it in your, in your mouth, uh, maybe under your tongue or something, or dermally meaning topically on your skin. Now it, it, there is such a thing as using too much essential oil. Um, in, in very small doses, you might not feel any effect at all. You got to find that optimum ther therapeutic range where you're going to feel the difference in the essential oil. You're going to experience that therapeutic benefit. If you apply too much uh, essential oil, the amount of therapeutic benefit will start to go down until you know you have way too much essential oil and you're not actually going to feel any um, response at all from that essential oil. The key is to stay right in that therapeutic range. But the thing is your body metabolizes the essential oil over time. So um, if you're applying uh, one to four drops, you're going to want to renew the application every four to six hours. Because that's a typical time that your body takes to break down the essential oil that's been applied. So to stay in that therapeutic range when you apply, the, um, the amount of essential oils in your body will grow and when your body will um, metabolize that, that'll go down, then you apply again, you know, in another four hours or so. So uh, that answers the question, how much? And so you're probably gonna ask next, like, 
how, when do we use this? What do we use this for? And that's probably why you're watching this video in the first place. So let's go ahead and get into that. I just want to give you a bit of advice for any use of essential oils. You're going to want to get to, for yourself an essential oil guide, whether that be a book or a smartphone app or join a Facebook group. You're welcome to join our Facebook group for essential oil users, which is facebook.com slash groups slash oil users all is one word you can either look up an ailment in those books or um, you can look up the oil most likely you'll run into a situation and say oh what oil do I use for that and you'll probably look up an ailment uh, and to use for the essential oil but if you have any questions it's best you know tap into other people's experience as well put your questions on the Facebook group and they'll be happy to help you answer those questions so um, these are the top 10 uses that I use my essential oils for and my family. Um, uplifting, concentration, hydration, detoxing, cleaning stuff like cleaning your home, uh, removing sticky residue, respiration, digestion, seasonal uh, discomforts, and cooking. But before I get into that, I just want to you know, lay down the obligatory FDA disclaimer, disclaimer that we need to um, put with all of our content here, that these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Um, I guess only drugs legally can do that. Whew. Anyways, that, enough of that. So let's go ahead and go through this list one at a time. We'll first talk about uplifting. Um, the, this is probably the main use that I use a lemon essential oil for. Whenever I'm feeling sad or glum, I just need a mood uplift, or whenever I need some cheering up, um, I, I go to this lemon essential oil. So here's a tip. Whenever you want to use an essential oil for any cognitive benefits, that means in terms of areas of memory and focus, thinking and emotions, you want to use that essential oil aromatically or in a way that's going to get it around your brain and specifically you know with this for emotions you want to use it um, to um, get your essential oil to a uh, part of your brain that's in charge of managing emotions which is the amygdala no the amygdala not amygdala <laughs> so how do you use essential oils so whenever you're feeling those strong emotions that's where that amygdala is going to, um, that's where that emotional response is going to come from. So if you look at the essential oil, um, it's a scent, it's a smell, um, and that smell is detected and uh, processed by your olfactory sensors in your nose, and then it goes to the brain for processing, and that processing is done by the amygdala, which also does the processing for your like emotional responses. Now, whether your, your essential oil gets to your mind, through, gets to your, your brain that way, or whether it's absorbed through uh, the nasal canal and, and the amygdala, or whether you put some across your forehead or on the back of your neck, uh, neck and skull, um, that's going to get to your amygdala, and that, that uh, chemical response is going to release these happy chemicals and help you, you know, it'll create this happy mood and help you know uplifting so how do you do this um, you want to apply like one to three drops in a diffuser or you can just put a drop of uh, lemon essential oil in your hand and cupped hand rub that together and put it over your nose and inhale deeply or you can just open the essential oil bottle and smell at just inhale from the bottle itself or you can wear it on you. Like if you have a diffuser uh, um, bracelet or something, like those Lava Rock ones, you can just put a couple drops on there. Or you can put it on you as cologne. Now I keep my lemon essential oil either at my desk or in a keychain where I can use that um, whenever you know I want to feel a little bit more happy than I'm uh, currently feeling. Now the second use for lemon essential oil, I for me, my top uses, is concentration. So whenever you want to clear your thoughts, when you're trying to analyze something and you feel like maybe your, your thinking is clouded by creativity or emotions, you want to clear that away and just be able to focus on your analytical tasks. Um, when things are just not going well, you're trying to do a job and it's just not going well, try using uh, lemon oil. 
Now, here's my experience. You know, there are times when I just have to sit down, not creating something, but I just need to analyze something and figure something out, and my thoughts are all muddled. And so, you know, it's almost like, like I've been stalled by I, I, my, my creativity, really. And so what I need to do is increase my concentration. So um, lemon essential oil will help increase your concentration. It, it activates that left brain reasoning. So if you look at your brain and how lemon essential oils kind of unlock this left brain thinking, um, your left brain is in charge of this logic, um, like language or numbers or analytical thinking, while your right brain is in charge of expression and emotional intelligence and imagination. So you want to unlock your left brain, you're going to use uh, some lemon essential oil kind of to clear your thoughts up. So remember what I said before, not every essential oil works the same for everybody, but this is worth a try. So whether you're trying to reason something through or when you feel stuck mentally, just get out your lemon essential oil and inhale for a few minutes or diffuse it around you or just open the bottle and take a whiff or uh, you know, put a drop in your cupped hands and inhale that or, uh, or you know, drop across your forehead or apply at the base of your, your skull on the back of your uh, neck and see what that does to help clear your thoughts um, and help you focus and concentrate. So that's it for concentration. Let's talk about um, number three. Uh, number three, we have staying hydrated. Now, I just want to give a little bit of a warning here with this. Um, it, we're talking about doTERRA essential oils now. What I'm telling you about doTERRA essential oils doesn't necessarily translate to other essential oils. And doTERRA is actually proud of this, um, that their essential oils are somewhat unique. Um, these essential oils are certified pure therapeutic grade. Um, not all lemon essential oil can be taken internally. So please, if you're not using doTERRA essential oils, um, just check the bottle to make sure from the manufacturer or producer that you can take it internally before trying any of this, okay? Um, I would highly recommend uh, using a pure and highly potent essential oil like the lemon from doTERRA. Now, let's talk about staying hydrated. Now you can add essential oil to any drink. I'm a water drinker, and so I love putting my essential oil into water. Um, all you're gonna add is one to three drops. So you take your uh, water bottle and you, you put a couple drops in there. You can shake it up if you want. You don't really have to, and you take a, take a drink of that. Now, um, you, uh, when you add essential oil to your water, it'll help quench your thirst. It's actually more satisfying, and it'll help you drink more. And help you, you know, when, when drinking is a satisfying activity, you'll find that you actually do it more often. It's more enjoyable. And it's very important to actually use a glass bottle or a metal bottle. The truth is that essential oil has these amazing qualities of being able to cleanse and, and detox and, and dissolve uh, petrochemicals. So there's an amazing experience, experiment that you can do that actually illustrates this point. Um, where, where you take a drop of essential oil, like lemon, and you put it on a styrofoam cup or bowl, and you can watch it in real time dissolve away these petrochemicals, which is really great when you're trying to detox or when you're trying to clean your home. But when it comes to drinking water out of a plastic bottle, not so cool when it's degrading the plastic bottle. Maybe you're ingesting some of those plastics. So you don't want to drink plastics. So what containers are good to use for your lemon essential oil? Well, you can use a glass container or a steel container. Um, aluminum containers are also good, but you want to make sure you maybe test it and make sure it doesn't discolor the aluminum. Otherwise, if the aluminum turns black, it's aluminum oxide. That means it's aluminum's type of rust. Um, or you can use uh, HDP, HDPE, which is high density polyurethane plastic. You'll probably notice that the lid on your lemon essential oil bottle is made out of plastic. And a lot of diffusers as well are made out of plastic. Lemon oil, citrus oils don't dissolve all plastics. It's just certain types of plastics. Other plastics may work as well. So if it's uh, HDP, HDPE or plastic number two, if you look at the plastic resin codes, it's plastic number two, you're going to be okay. Okay. And it also depends on how diluted it is. Um, but I would definitely avoid plastic number six, which is the polyesterine or any type of, you know, like you saw that experiment with the styrofoam, you want to avoid any kind of plastics like that. 
So um, you want, uh, and other oils might be hard, uh, might be harmful as well. So what I do is I just stick with uh, putting my essential oils into glass. I like glass; it's kind of natural, and you know, it just has a good taste and it keeps your water cold and everything. So let me share with you some of the bottles that I use. Now, if you can just go on to Amazon.com or something and just buy a bunch of juicing bottles, I have a link for all these bottles on the benbalden.com slash lemon webpage. So get yourself some juicing bottles. They work out to be about three or four dollars a piece. You can fill it with uh, your water, put a couple drops of essential oil in it, and you can use it over and over. And make sure you're not getting some, make sure you're checking the, um, the cap on the top um, to make sure all the plastic components are, are strong enough. Um, you can also use a Voss bottle. Um, this is just bottled water and that comes in a glass. You can use that and, and reuse that. Um, or you can get these rubber wrapped um, drink bottles. Um, we have some of those. Um, they usually work out to be about 20 to $30 a piece. It's not really rubber, it's silicon. It's a silicon sleeve um, to protect it from, if you drop it or something, it's not gonna break. And I think we, you know, we've had some for years and you drop them. I think we've had one break in the last 10 years. So it's, it's, uh, they're pretty safe to, to use. Okay. So here's how you do it. You just uh, simply get your glass bottle, fill it up with your water and then put a few drops in it. Like anywhere between, I usually use one to three, but you can put up like five drops of water in there. Um, so you want to keep some of your lemon oil uh, next to your tap where you fill up your water, um, maybe in the kitchen, and next to the place where you're working so you can put a couple drops of uh, lemon oil in your water. I actually take some with me, you know, um, when when I go, you know, bring some out in my keychain so I have some on hand. Now, let's talk about that. That's, that's it for um, staying hydrated. Let's talk about detoxing. You can use your lemon essential oil to help you detox as well. The lemon essential oil, as we, as we were saying before, has these awesome cleansing properties and it's safe for drinking, so it, it leads to this natural cleansing of the body. It supports the body's ability to naturally cleanse. And it's actually always been part of doTERRA's 30-day cleanse and detox program. Why would you want to cleanse and detox with lemon essential oil or any other kind of uh, product? Well, the truth is that we live in this modern environment and there are all these pollutants in the air, you know, air pollution, water pollution, noise, not noise pollution, um, processed foods that we uh, eat. Sometimes they'll have plastics and other chemicals and solvents in there, or medications or synthetic chemicals or, you know, all these sorts of bad things that we have in our, in our environment around us. And some of these chemicals and compounds and toxins actually stay in our body for a long time. So lemon is one of those things that's actually gonna help. There's a lot of other essential oils out there that'll help you detox, but lemon's gonna be like the simplest, the easiest. Um, so that's a really good place to start if you wanna do a detox. And all you have to do to detox with essential oils is just use it frequently um, and daily. Add some to your water. Uh, it'll help you stay hy hydrated and help clean out your insides, okay? So my thoughts, you know, um, whenever I'm working with, you know, uh, a bunch of chemicals or paints, uh, for instance, or glues or petroleum products, you know, filling up my lawnmower with gas and I get some of that chemical on us or where I'm breathing it in. I just feel like those some of the chemicals are being absorbed into my tissues or my body and I just feel a little bit polluted. So somehow those things are in me or on me and I just want to get them out and want to avoid long-term damage because we know a lot of those things can be carcinogenic. And if they're in me for a long time and big amounts, then, you know, you know, sometimes when people come down with cancer, you don't know exactly what molecule at what, at if, what DNA and what cell started the whole um, cancerous project. So if we could just eliminate as many carcinogens from our life as possible, likely we will have uh, less chance of getting the diseases like, you know, cancer or something. So, but I really just want this peace of mind, you know, when I'm working with these things um, that comes from, you know, using uh, lemon essential oil and just, just cleanse it out if I can. So here are my tips. The next time you fill up your water bottle, just put a couple drops of lemon essential oil in there with you. I bring my little um, 
sample vials with me. You know, whenever I go to like a, um, a restaurant or something, and I'll just tap a couple dro uh, drops of that lemon oil into the water. I always order water at restaurants. I know it's kind of boring, but I'm a water drinker, and it makes drinking water very um, a lot nicer. You know, when you have a little bit of lemon flavor in it, and this is much different than like squeezing a fresh lemon into your water, which is going to end up costing you more, as I demonstrated earlier. You squeeze a bit of lemon uh, from a, uh, an actual fruit, lemon fruit in your water. At the end of the day, it's going to be a bit rancid. But if you have a bottle of uh, water with a few drops of lemon essential oil, that's going to stay fresh for a long time. So just bring a sam uh, sample with you, and it'll just give you that kind of peace of mind that you want when you are, you know, trying to live this natural wellness lifestyle and you know, obtain the optimum, optimum level of health in your life. Okay, so we're on to step number five, or step number five, point number five, which is cleaning. So I know if you're like me, you wanna live naturally, you wanna remove these un unnatural chemicals, you just wanna you know, do as much as you can you know, with what nature gave you. So there's just a lot of caustic or synthetic chemicals out there. And although admittedly some of these chemicals might be very effective at cleaning, what is the cost to your health? You know, you're breathing in those chemicals, you're putting them on your skin. And there's, if there's not healthy in large amounts, they certainly can't be healthy even in small amounts. So the toxins build up over time. And over years, you know, that's gonna to start to degrade your health. And it's like that uh, frog experiment where you put a frog in a pot of boil uh, water and you just slowly warm it up to boil it. You, the frog never jumps out because it never notices that there's a, there's a problem. Over the years, all this toxic chemical buildup may have put, you know, you know, added a little bit of toxins at a time and you don't notice the, the toll it's taking on your health. Um, so you might wanna go back to the other point and do a uh, cleanse or a detox. But the, pro the thing is that, you know, some of those carcinogens can lead to uh, other types of diseases, so you wanna avoid that, right? But, you know, at the same time, I know those chemicals are, cleaning chemicals are harsh and everything, but I want a clean house, right? I want it clean from dirt, and I want it clean from pathogen, path pathogens, um, bacteria, I just want it disinfected, right? Um, get all, get out all the mold and everything, so how can I reduce my exposure um, or re you know, be exposed as little as possible to toxins. So instead, I got rid of all the toxins in my house and replaced it with natural remedies where possible, like essential oils. So um, natural remedies you'll find are just as effective as their chemical counterparts, or sometimes even more effective, and actually sometimes will even cost a lot less. So not only are they safe to use, they're therapeutic, they're effective, and they, in most cases, cost less. So let me just give you an example with lemon essential oil. If I make up a solution, a cleaning solution with lemon essential oil, I'll share with you the recipe in a little bit. We put a couple drops of lemon, water, and vinegar, or whatever, and it works out to be about two cents per ounce. I looked up on Amazon and looked at all of the typical um, spray cleaners, general purpose cleaners, and when you break down the price per ounce, you get anywhere from seven to 13 cents per ounce. So we're talking about two cents per ounce, so it's a lot better. And that's even, you know, doTERRA's On Guard general purpose cleaner is about four cents per ounce. And, you know, these, it's, it's really a quadruple win. It's cheaper, it's more effective, it's safer, and it's healthier. And so kind of, it's, it's, it's a no brainer. I don't know why you wouldn't use these things to clean all the time reduce your chances of you know, those carcinogens causing problems later on. So if you just stop using uh, carcinogenic things or toxic things, and you can use these natural things, you'll be a lot better off and your, your chances will be a lot better, okay? So in our home, we replace all of our chemical cleaners with natural, and so we only use natural uh, nature to clean our home. Our family is healthy and um, you know we can lick the table after we clean it because we know we're not getting any of those chemicals into our body. So how do you do this? Uh, so, so the basic DIY, DIY recipe for using um, an oil like lemon essential oil, just put five to 10 drops of lemon oil into a glass spray bottle 
uh, filled with uh, either water or vinegar or both. Um, it can be out of glass or HDPE, which is the number two um, plastic. Um, and you can clean anything from floors, windows, dishes, countertops, bathrooms, porcelain, stoves, ovens, um, pretty much anything. Now, here's a little tip. If, if you're going to clean a new surface that you haven't used essential oils on before, or if you're going to clean something like toys that are plastic and stuff, just test a little bit of that um, lemon on there before you go ahead and uh, clean it all, uh, all off just to make sure that you're not damaging any surfaces because it's going to really clean it, okay? So I keep a little bit, I, I don't really keep a, a, a lemon essential oil with my cleaning products, but I always have a bottle of cleaning solution, uh, natural cleaning solution ready for whenever we need to clean, like I'll pull it out, give a, a few um, sprays and clean it. Now, if you're interested in cleaning with essential oils and you'd like to learn more about that, you can hop over to my website at benbalden.com slash cleaning. There's actually a handout there with a lot of DUI DIY projects on there. Um, I've also curated at benbalden.com slash lemon, the blog post associated with this video, a lot of the doTERRA's DIY ideas that use lemon essential oil in cleaning. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, the next uh, thing we're going to talk about is sticky re residue. Now, I know this is like a little light cleaning and it's not really a therapeutic remedy, but I honestly go to this uh, remedy. I, I use it so often that I just want to include it on my top 10 ways I use essential oils. It's a little bit different thing than cleaning. I, I really dislike that sticky residue that's left over when you take off a sticker or, or something else and, and it's got this little gummy thing and you wipe it with the rag and it kind of moves over here and then moves over there. It's just really frustrating. Like, how do you get this darn stuff off? Um, it just feels like it's stuck on there forever and you can see it move around and you're like, it somehow it can come off. So it's, it, I know it's frustrating. You've probably been there too. Um, so lemon oil can help. It's got this cleaning power. It's got this dissolving power. So all you do is use a couple of drops. Now, remember the lemon essential oil is only four cents a drop, so you're not losing much. Um, you put it on there, leave it a bit sometimes, maybe massage it in, work it through, and then just wipe it right off. And that will work with most sticky residues. And the benefits are amazing because unlike chemical cleaners and solvents, when it gets on your skin, it's actually a good thing. It's going to improve your health rather than deteriorate your health and it'll lift your mood as you're cleaning as well. And the lemon scent is natural. <laughs> it's a part of it. So um, yeah, that's, that's removing sticky residue. That's actually one of the main uses that I use le lemon essential oil for. Okay, let's talk about respiration. Doterra essential, lemon essential oil helps with respiratory health, supports healthy respiration. So I know sometimes I'm not feeling 100%. I feel like I just need to go outside, get a little bit more air, or maybe I'm congested or something. And I just want a remedy that's natural, that's safe. I really, really dislike taking drugs. It's like the last thing that I want to try. So I try something natural before I go to something uh, invasive like that. So um, for respiration, it, you know, lemon essential oil is one of the essential oils that supports a healthy respiration. It's actually in the doTERRA's respiratory blend called Breathe. Um, it's going to help your body and your body's natural ability to breathe easily, It'll help open it up, help break down some mucus and everything. So there are three ways that you can use uh, lemon essential oil to help you maintain a healthy respiration. So first is you're gonna swish, put a couple drops of a lemon essential oil into a glass of water, um, actually a small swig of water, um, and then you're gonna swish that around, maybe gargle a little bit and then swallow. Second way that you can use it is you get some hot water, add a few drops of essential oil after the water is stopped boiling or whatever. And then a bit of honey, maybe a half a teaspoon or something, and then you can sip that slowly, and you'll notice that kind of opens up your your breathing uh, abilities. Or you can just diffuse it right next to your bed or right next to where you work um, to help you breathe easier. So I keep a little bit of essential oils whenever that need arises to improve my respiration. I keep a little bit of essential oils next to my bed or in the kitchen, um, wooden box in the kitchen. Um, so whenever I, I need it, I know it's there. So let's talk about digestion. Digestion is number eight on our list here. Um, my, I, my feeling is that great health comes from good nutrition, which comes from um, good digestion. 
So a good digestion will help to get the nutrition into your body, which will lead to excellent health. Um, so that's a very important part of your health. And, you know, I, I feel like sometimes I want to be very proactive in my approach to my health. I feel like, you know, it's, it's like when you take care of your house, you know, you want to keep a clean house, you want to maintain your, your equipment and everything. Or maybe if you have a, a brand new car and, and you want to take good care of it and you're you use the best kind of oil on the motor and you, you just want it to work and do the job that you want it to do. So it's, that's the same like with your body. You're investing in your body. And, and so I want to keep my body clean. So instead of waiting for things to break down, you know, like um, cleaning a house, you know, you're not waiting for things to break down around your house. You're, you're keeping it clean. You don't wait for things to pile up or get dirty. So I just naturally, you know, whether you're responding to a need to improve your digestion or whether you just want to keep your digestion at optimum health, um, kind of like I, I, I see myself doing, um, you want to use essential oil. So how do you use essential oil to improve your digestion? Well, you take it internally. And we've already talked about a few ways. You could also add lemon essential oil to a gel cap. Gel cap are those little um, um, veg, vegetable capsules. You can put a couple drops of any essential oil you want in there and uh, swallow it down with some water. Now here's what I do, is when I, I keep a bit of lemon essential oil over where I take my supplements every day. So when I reach for my supplements, count out my supplements, and I'll put a couple drops of uh, lemon into the water that I'm gonna wash the supplements down with. So a little bit every day helps to improve, you know, do the cleansing, the respiration thing, and also um, improve your digestion as well. So that, that's how I approach that and maintain a healthy um, health, healthy level of health. <laughs> okay, the next uh, thing we're gonna talk about is seasonal. So seasonal issues. I just hate getting stuffed up when I uh, work outside. You know, the occasional irritation of being in nature. I just wanna clear it up and I wanna use something that's natural. Um, and I just, you know, when you wanna breathe or breathe better or open up. So here is a blend that a lot of people know about. Uh, it's lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Um, in fact, this is so common that doTERRA has put together a, a soft gel for it called Tri-Ease, where you can buy it in soft gel form and take that internally. Um, so you can use this topically or internally uh, to kind of improve your ability to overcome those seasonal effects that you, uh, that you get when you're working or playing outside. So we talked about internally, you can actually put some in some, in some water, lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Um, and when it comes to applying it topically, you can put some in a, like maybe five drops of each equally into a 10 mil roller bottle, either just reuse one or buy some blank uh, um, unused uh, roller bottles, uh, fill it maybe halfway full with a fraction of coconut oil, and then just rub that on the bottom of your foot, or maybe across your forehead, or just around where your sinuses are to get that into your body in the right place. Um, you can also put you know, uh, equal amounts of lemon, lavender, and peppermint into a veggie cap, the, the capsules we talked about earlier. And that's how you support your body's ability to deal with the seasonal um, you know, effects of irritation that you might experience. Last of all, the last way that I use essential oil, and it really had to be on the top 10 list here, was with cooking. I love to cook, and I love using quality ingredients when I cook. And yes, you can use essential oils while you are cooking, and use only quality oils. And so um, when I sit down to cook, I want, I, I want to make sure that, you know, um, I put things in a little bit at a time. So... Um, you know, essential oils just help make things a lot better. So you're probably asking, well, why would you cook with essential oils? Well, the truth is there are already essential oils in your food. They're found in the herbs and in, in some fruits and, and other plants. And so adding essential oils into your food is, is just adding a little bit of the goodness that's already there. So add some therapeutic value, like, if, like we just talked about the um, digestive effects of lemon and the respiratory effects. So it's, it's it adds a lot of amazing things. It also gives it this really crisp and clear flavor. Like it's, it's almost as if it, it um, just clears it up and you're like, mm, this is so good. I can really hone in on this, on this flavor there. So not only is it healthy for you, but it's pleasurable to eat as well. So I've got some tips for you uh, for cooking with essential oils. 
Now, when uh, considering what essential oil to use, you just look at the herbal equivalent. So if you have a recipe that uses lemon or lemon peel, you can actually add a few drops of lemon essential oil in there. And get to know the oils that you would use for cooking. Um, there's spicy oils, there's herb herbaceous oils, there's citrus oils, and the mint and floral oils. And each one of them is going to have a different um, unique way that you want to use it with different, different dishes, right? Um, and you want to add your essential oils after you heat or cook your item, if possible. Sometimes that's not possible. You might throw it into a cake batter or whatever. Um, adding it into the essential oil, uh, adding your essential oils in after you cook, are going to do. It's going to do two things for you. Um, when you do heat up essential oils, it sometimes changes the molecular nature of the molecules, and so you kind of lose some of that therapeutic benefit. Secondly is when you heat up essential oils, they tend to evaporate a lot easier than say like water does. That's how the steam distillation process uh, got them out of the plant in the first place. And so adding it after you heat it up is going to be your best bet there. Also try adding small amounts up in, at first. And even consider like with some of the spicy oils like oregano, add like half of a drop and you do that with a toothpick um, like to your spaghetti or whatever. So consider using lemon essential oil in your cooking. It is really good. You can do it in marinades, lemon, uh, uh, sorry, um, salad dressing, um, drinks, uh, desserts, and you know, uh, anything that you can use a lemon lemon juice in. You can use lemon essential oil in. So if you are interested in learning more about cooking with essential oils, you can go to benbalden.com/cook where I have. Not only a bit of an explanation, some tips like you just heard about cooking with essential oils, but also a lot of recipes um, that I've curated over the years. And also, I've, I've gone to doTERRA's website and kind of called all the um, recipes that use lemon essential oil, and there are a lot of them. So I have a list at um, benbalden.com slash lemon, where you can just go through the recipes, see them all on one page and one list, and, and click on them and use lemon essential oil in your cooking. So guys, that's it I have for you for my top 10 uh, uses for lemon essential oil that I use. Um, you know, that's, there are a lot of other ways to use lemon essential oil. You know, you can always go to an essential oil guide and learn more. So first of all, we're gonna talk about what it is. So lemon essential oil is basically oil, right? Plant extracts. They're made mostly from the rinds of the oil, so there's no fruit. So if you're like, if you know of anybody who like avoids drinking lemon juice because of its acid content or its sugar content, lemon essential oil is nothing like that. So it's made from the rinds, so there's no fruit in it, there's no acid, there's no sugars and any, anything like that. It's also cold pressed. So that means they take the rind and they press the oils out. And they do this to preserve some therapeutic value that may have been lost that might be lost if they did some steam extraction, which is how they extract most essential oils because there are these aromatic compounds and they evaporate, evaporate very easily. I also want to talk a little bit about how essential oils, how lemon essential oils is so concentrated. Here I have before me 46 lemons. Now there are 46, the rinds of 46 lemons in a bottle of lemon essential oil. Now I've had heard reports that there are between 46, 43, 75, um, but the fact is that there are a lot of lemons in a bottle of essential oil. And that's about between five to seven pounds of lemon rind. Now if you go to the store and buy lemons at maybe 43 cents, and I know that sometimes they're more expensive, um, 43 cents times 46 lemons, that's $19.78. And one bottle of Oterra lemon essential oil is only $11 wholesale. And that works out to be about 4.4 cents. Now that's not taken into account the savings that you would get in addition to your wholesale discount when you buy your products on loyalty rewards order. So lemon is one of those 30 essential oils that you can get from doTERRA for under $20. And so it's a fantastic way to start off your essential oil collection a bit of lemon essential oil. So let's talk a little bit about sourcing, why it's important and where the where this lemon essential oil comes from. So sourcing is doTERRA's unique point. You could say it's it, it's doTERRA's point of differentiation. What's what makes it the essential oils from doTERRA different from any other company? So if someone asks you what what makes what 
what's different about doTERRA's essential oils? The answer is sourcing and is so important. doTERRA is probably the, at the time of this uh, recording, you know, doTERRA is the only essential oil company in the world that we know of that sources its essential oils specifically for its therapeutic value, which means they're looking for the most potent essential oil in that category on the planet. And there's no other company that really does that because when we go for an essential oil, there's a purpose, you know, we want to use that essential oil to, you know, accomplish some therapeutic benefit in our life. And so we want it to work the same every time that we use it and we want it to work when we use it, okay? Now, not all lemons are the same. You know, the lemon essential oil, the quality of your essential oil, the potency is gonna change depending on the type of soil that the lemons are grown in, the type of climate, the growing conditions, the harvesting, and the extraction methods that are used in procuring that lemon essential oil. So um, doTERRA works specifically directly with its growers and these relationships, they have relationships with these people all over the world and they source the essential oils from everywhere, including you know some impoverished or developing nations and they build relationships with these and they, they their humanitarian um, side of doTERRA you know, has all these projects that help the people and developing nations and they all get together and they develop, you know, they grow these awesome essential oils in the place on the planet that grows them the best um, because it's the right growing conditions, the climate and everything like that. So it's not just a pure essential oil you're getting in the end, it's a potent essential oil. That's why people are so goo goo gaga about doTERRA essential oils because the essential oils are so potent. So that's what makes doTERRA essential oils different. Now. Um, Again, a little bit about sourcing. doTERRA gets their lemon essential oils from Italy, mostly from the area of Sicily, and also a small amount of lemon essential oil from Brazil. Now the trees there are grown just for the lemon essential oils, as opposed, and, and you know, the fruit and the um, juice is just a byproduct of that. That's as opposed to, you know, having a tree that's grown for its fruit and then they, the byproduct is the peels and they make lemon essential oils from the peels. So just from one lemon tree, you're gonna get about 500 to 600 lemons in a year, which works out to about seven fluid ounces of lemon essential oil. That's about 207 milliliters. And that equates to about 13 to 14 bottles, 15 mil bottles of lemon essential oil. I think that's pretty fantastic. One tree in a whole year is gonna produce 13 to 14 bottles of lemon essential oil. So how lucky are we? We got it. We get it for $11 a piece. So I wanna talk a little bit about what's in these bottles. You know, is the oil from the lemon rind, what does that mean? What, what exactly is in there? So we're gonna talk about chemistry. So um, lemon essential oil chemistry, there are three main components or molecules that are found in, the in a bottle of lemon essential oil. There is limonene, there is beta-pymene, and there is uh, gamma-terpenene. Now, these is, this is important because each of these constituents has like a specific job that it's doing. So limonene is calming and uplifting. <laughs> Beta-pinene uh, supports immunity amongst other things, right? And gamma terpenine is has these cleansing properties. Now you're wondering like, how do we know what's in that bottle of essential oil? Scientists are amazing and there's a lot of tests that they can do with these essential oils to find out what's in there. And there's this an amazing test called the GCMS, the Gas Chromatography Mass Spectrometry test. Um, and this is probably the most popular among amongst these essential oil scientists where they take um, a bit of a gas and some uh, uh, heated uh, air and they break the essential oil uh, down and, and, and uh, accelerate it in a, in a um, coil. And as it, ex it accelerates, it actually separates according to molecular, molecular mass. Now, uh, each molecule of essential oil has a specific weight uh, associated with it. And as the, as the oil comes out of that um, gas chromatographer and into a mass spectrometry, it counts like how many molecules of this specific weight do we have in what percentage in that solution. So the higher peaks on the report are gonna mean that there are higher percentages of those molecules in that situation, in that solution. And so if you actually look at uh, the bottom of your essential oil bottle 
um, for most of them anyways, it's going to have a number. And you can take that number and put it into um, APRC's website, um, source to you website. APRC is the third party tester that doTERRA uses. And so if you plug that number into their website, um, it'll uh, it'll bring up the GCMS report for that batch of essential oil, which is pretty cool. So if you look at Lemon's uh, report here, you notice that lemonine is the highest content there, beta pinene, and then gamma terpenine um, in those various amounts. And you can see the chart there and how that's uh, represented. You can see like those are the three most, um, you know, a, a present uh, molecules in lemon essential oil. And you're probably wondering like, why are you talking about all this chemistry? And why, do, why is this important to lemon essential oil? It turns out that each of these molecules or uh, molecular families has a therapeutic benefit associated with it. So there is a chemistry behind this. So if you look at limonene, for instance, um, it has a therapeutic benefit, uh, mostly of uplifting and everything. So you can actually download this chemistry wheel. Uh, if, if you go to the blog associated with this video, benbalden.com slash lemon, you can actually download one of these or go onto doTERRA's website and just type in oil chemistry wheel and it'll, it'll bring this up and you can see that for yourself. So the main idea is that there is these molecules in your lemon essential oil and there's basically three of them, although there's a lot of other supporting molecules those are the molecules that are gonna do the job. So you're wondering, well, those molecules, what does that have to do with us and our bodies? Well, one drop of essential oil contains about 40 million trillion molecules. That's 40, so, so, um, followed by 3, 6, 12, 15, 18, 21 zeros, right? 40 and 21 zeros. We have actually 37 trillion cells in our body. And if you're including the cells from the, micro, um, the microbes uh, in our microorganisms in our gut, there's about 100 trillion. That's right, there's more microbes than there are human cells in our body. So if you divide that out, there's about, uh, for every one drop of essential oil, it has enough molecules in it to cover every single cell in our body, including those microorganisms with 400,000 molecules of essential oil. So that's basically coverage. And there are estimates out there where it's actually upwards of about 1.2 million essential oil compounds for each cell in the human body. So no matter how you look at it, there's a lot of essential oil per cell in your body. And you're wondering, well, what does that matter? Well, essential oils are amazing because they're so small in molecular size and they're lipids. So they're able to pass through the skin. They're able to pass into the cell so they can address issues either inside the body or outside the body, as opposed to like a protein molecule, which is about a hundred to a thousand times bigger than an essential oil molecule. So there you have it, the amazing power of essential oils. And you know, we're just now starting to understand what these essential oil molecules are doing in that cell or in the body. Um, it's not just one chemical reaction that this molecule of essential oil is doing, it's a whole um, like a list of chemical reactions called a biological pathway. And so this biological pathway is how things happen in our body. This chemical reaction happens followed by this chemical reaction followed by this one. And scientists are now uh, starting to understand a lot more about these biological pathways and essential oils, how the essential oils are working in our bodies on a molecular basis, on a you know cellular basis, molecule to molecule, um, how it's unlocking different um, abilities in our cells. Now, essential oils have been used, um, it's not a new thing, they, they have been used for centuries and centuries. The whole history of usage of essential oils and their respective herbs throughout you know recorded time and scientific knowledge started you know in the 19th century with you know scientific awakening or people gathering information about what essential oil does what and why and everything but now it's starting to explode as the scientific knowledge about essential oils is growing and growing and scientists are now kind of this pendulum swinging back to you know let's find out what has been available available in nature and essential oils for, for many, many years. And the body of scientific knowledge is growing exponentially, exponentially year by year. In fact, doTERRA itself 
has a group of scientists, doctors, advisors, research partners that are there to you know, help doTERRA learn more, get, gather more empirical and scientific data about the essential oils. Now, doTERRA essential oils, because they do so much testing and because every bottle is so similar be, um, from the bottle before it because of the rigorous um, methods that they follow, the stability and predictability of doTERRA's essential oils make reliable scientific research possible for the first time. Now, doTERRA has a lot of research um, partners out in the world, including some very well-known hospitals and universities that are studying the effects of uh, essential oils, how they work on our body. So I just wanna address that in, in terms from a chemistry uh, standpoint to get you, give you an idea that this is not just you know some airy-fairy, smelly essential oils. You know, doTERRA wants to bring this out of obscurity, but they also wanna provide the scientific data the empirical uh, evidence that we need to see how these essential oils are working in an amazing ways in our body. So that's the chemistry for you. I want to, you know, say a few more things about lemon. Lemon is also used in a lot of blends. Um, it blends well with other other essential oils, and you can also make your own blends with lemon. We talked about the seasonal support blend, um, and if you don't have blend, uh, if you don't have lemon. You can always look for a substitute. There's always going to be a substitute to any oil that you're using. So in the case of lemon, uh, I would just try one of the other citrus oils, uh, bergamot, which is a really close uh, relative to lemon, grapefruit, um, lime, lemons on there. It's a good a substitute for lemon and wild orange. Um, so there you have it, guys. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's it. I hope you've learned a lot. Um, if you've learned something new, let me know in the comments below. Uh, did we reach our goal? Do you feel like we knocked it out of the park and you really know what lemon essential oil is and how to use it? Um, I really feel like, um, in conclusion, you know, lemon is this really um, versatile, and amazing essential oil. And you know, our, our purpose here is to become empowered um, by using nature's products and and essential oils and stuff from nature to boost our health and live this natural wellness lifestyle and to be able to do it with confidence. So if we've accomplished that, uh, let me know in the comments, um, has your knowledge grown? And do you feel more empowered now? So if you don't have lemon and you watch this and you're like, I wanna get some lemon essential oil, um, I would recommend buying it wholesale. Um, you can open a wholesale account. Now, if you don't already have a doTERRA account or already have a, a doTERRA um, product or rep um, that's helping you, um, you're welcome to go to benbalden.com slash oils and open an account with me. A wholesale account is gonna cost you $35 to open or $25 to renew every year. And that gives you 25% off everything. So as soon as you buy like three or four oils, it's gonna pay for itself. Um, and not only that, you're able to save a lot more with doTERRA's loyalty program. And there's no obligation to purchase uh, minimum purchase or m minimum purchase requirements, kind of like a Costco membership. You pay for the membership and you get the benefits and don't really have to do anything else. Um, there's no other obligations um, that you have. Now, if you set up an account with me, um, you'll get a free gift. And that's if your orders are over $100 there. Um, so to do that, just go to benbalden.com slash oils or benbalden.com slash wholesale and we'll help get you started. So for more information about lemon essential oil, please uh, you know, download my free handout at benbalden.com slash lemon. Uh, there's a little uh, clip at the top um, tells you all about lemon essential oil and you can actually collect these handouts and put together in a, in a binder sort of thing. So um, yeah, thank you for watching and thank you for your support. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, visit my website for more information and videos or like and follow my Facebook page. And you can always support and comment uh, by commenting and sharing this uh, with someone. And I want to remind you that, you know what? Let's get out there and live a happier, fuller life.